some signs of being trauma bonded. Holding on to the fantasy that they're not what they're actually presenting themselves as. Holding on to the fantasy that the good could be the reality, that the good parts could be what's real and could be what is always there. Another thing you might experience is justifying the behavior of the other person. There's a sign that you are trauma bonded to the person because if you weren't, you'd see this behavior clear as day and step away. Another right. sign of trauma bonding is the constant thoughts of another person. You should be able to go through your day. People you have in your life come up in your thoughts. You consider them maybe when you're taking a break or whatever, but you should be able to function without the nagging, insistent, persistent anxiety of worrying, wondering, and thinking about that other person. That's a sign that there's either codependency going on or trauma bonding going on or both. Right. Okay. Another sign of being trauma bonded is when you are apart, you have a desire to return to a toxic person. You have, you have a strong pull toward that person, even though you know what they did. Low self-esteem can come into play here and feeling lost to self, feeling like you are no longer who you are. I had someone just yesterday saying, it just feels like a fog. I don't know. I don't feel like me. It doesn't feel right. I feel all wrong. And that was a great description of a horrible situation of feeling trauma bonded. So remember that love is not this. You may feel like you love this person and in truth you may in some ways love this person, but remember that this love that you're feeling is also mixed and blended and twisted and all smushed together with trauma bonding. If you have been with someone who is highly manipulative and how, who does these things that create these trauma bonds, right? So understand that, that what you will feel when you heal from this will be completely different. So even though it's like, yes, but I love them. Yes, but I love them. Understand that that if you want to get away and you want your life free of toxic people, you have to see sometimes what you may be experiencing of, of love in this moment may not actually be 100% love. Okay. It's also mixed with this addictive process. Start, what creates these trauma bonds? The love bomb and the devalue cycle. So a narcissist, usually in the beginning of relationships, is a different person. What we say is they wear a mask. They are love bombing you. They are grooming you and they are conditioning you to believe certain things about them are true. Most narcissistic people have a love bombing period in the beginning of relationships. This is why when you're in new relationships after being with a toxic person, or if you've never met one and you want to stay away from them, you got to get to know people a bit. You got to get to know all the sides of a person. Okay. And narcissists will have distinct sides. This fake person that they want people to believe they are, which they present during the love bombing. And then they have the devaluing, which we're getting to next. The devaluing side who is critical of everyone and we'll talk about that in a second what the love bombing does is it creates the feeling of trust right it creates the bond in the beginning what happens after that it doesn't matter if it's a month a week or years the, the devaluation starts once a narcissist starts to devalue the mask is off they don't usually come back from it they usually then stay in the cycle once the devaluing starts, they no longer keep you up on that pedestal and they're letting you see their true face. The displeased, arrogant, unhappy, um, critical person that they really are. And they project onto you during the devaluing. They gaslight you during the devaluing. They may cheat on you. They may put you down. So the devaluing is literally what it sounds like, devaluing, taking away the value. Then the cycle starts, then they love bomb for a few days and devalue for a few days or however long it is, right? The, it, the thing is it's intermittent. It's, it's not consistent. It is, they start a little bit, they do a little bit of the love bombing. They do a bunch of the devaluing. They may love bomb you for an hour by text and then come home and completely stonewall you. They may be out to dinner and be life of the party and you get home and you get the silent treatment. You don't know what you did. So it's hot and cold flip flop. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Ms. Hyde going on all the time. That creates total confusion and cognitive dissonance in your brain because you don't know what's what. You start thinking it's you. You start thinking that you're the problem or that there's a problem in the relationship or the person's going through something and they just need help. You start thinking all kinds of things, but the one thing you're not thinking is that's a narcissist. And that narcissist is not going to change. Most of the time, that's not what we're thinking. We're trying to fix it. So while we're trying to fix it our brains start reacting to it we what happens is 
we start the chase. We start getting feeling addicted to this process because what we're looking for is some resolution that everything's okay in our relationship. We're looking for ourselves to feel like, like we're loved, like we're wanted, like we're cared about, right? And the devaluing, it becomes almost a challenge. It becomes so sad and so heartbreaking and then such relief and such joy in the moments when we get the love bombing. It makes us addicted to the pattern. It creates an extreme need for validation. And validation, not only that this person actually cares about us and loves us, validation for our worth, validation for for pretty much everything in the relationship being what you think it is, and then validation that this is actually happening. So when you go to leave or when you're maybe in the state you're in right now, you're going, did this really happen? And, and that need for validation is really normal because it's part of this process. So all of this stuff that's going on makes it really hard to walk away. It makes it hard to leave. It makes it hard to stay away. And it makes us feel like we're the ones at fault because it's super confusing. Most people who are trauma bonded have what is called cognitive dissonance going on. It's holding two opposing beliefs at the same time. It is your mind trying to understand the duplicity of what is taking place. It's answered through allowing that toxic person to be exactly who they are and seeing the truth of who they are. Acceptance of their truth, allowance of their truth. In fact, to the point where you're like, yeah, you are that. And it's in seeing that that helps you recognize okay if i'm not if i'm seeing that this is what this person is and how they are and i'm also thinking oh but maybe it could be okay that might not be accurate i may need to listen to exactly what it is they're presenting me so what do you do when you're trauma bonded what do you do okay we have one of the more comprehensive programs out there for helping people get through this stuff and one of the pieces of that is group coaching if you need it please join it okay, okay i am lise Colucci. And I'm here to help you if you need it. So check out the info in the description of every video. Let me know how you're doing if you've gone through this, if you're experiencing trauma bonding, what is up for you and what do you need help with? So trauma bonds can be hard to break alone. What the group offers is not only, hey, you get to talk to me, whatever, you also get other people going through the same thing at the same time who are being vulnerable and sharing their experience in a setting that is safe and small and um, protected from anyone else's ears. Okay. So if you need it, there it is. That information for that is in the description of every video. I just, other ways is find a therapist or do private coaching one-on-one -on -one with someone. Another, okay. Sorry. Another way to break these trauma bonds. Okay. You guys live in the moment, the moment right now, be present to yourself, do things, get busy in your life, focus on you, your life, stay on your own track, stop looking back and stop looking at the other person's, the toxic person's anything, okay? Going no contact is really important if for a lot of people, for most people. If you can't and you're low contact, pretend you're no contact and only have contact about the things that are necessary and keep those brief and businesslike. Take days one step at a time. Take moment to moment. Make choices that are right now just make a choice right now maybe a different choice in 10 seconds that's okay just one foot in front of the other toward a goal of being free from these trauma bonds it is possible to break them people are doing it all the time the times people forget self-care they forget they need to even take care of themselves they don't even notice that they're not so you can go to your basics basic self-care eating sleeping bathing getting dressed, all of these things, our home, taking care of our home, these basic things that we're doing anyway, driving to work, whatever, do them with a little more care for yourself, whatever it is. If you're going to eat a meal, take three bites where you enjoy the taste of the meal. And if you're not into it, just say thanks for making the meal to yourself in your head, right? Like be appreciative of yourself. Take a shower. If you in your shower, put the temperature just right. Get the soaps you like, get the smells you like, take care of yourself. And you may need to use that space to cry or you may need to decide that that's like off limits crying space and you use it to relax everything you do in your life add one little thing that is care for yourself and it will help build 
a self-care mindset that helps you through your day and gets you out of falling back into worrying about the other person. So a lot of people want to skip this step, but we got to feel all of it and grieve it and let it out. And sometimes talking about it helps. Sometimes journaling helps. Whatever it is that works for you, sometimes just taking a weekend in bed and just crying, whatever it is you need to do, do it as long as it's safe, sane, and healthy for you, okay? And know that these feelings will pass. You're not going to get stuck there. If you hold them back and try and avoid them and be like, I'm just taking this route and I'm just going to be positive and I'm just going to, they'll catch up with you. So let yourself feel it and process it. It's a lot to take in and it's a lot to, it's a lot to go through. And one thing I'm going to add here is try to be careful with too many timelines on yourself, especially in the beginning of healing from trauma bonds. It takes everyone the time it takes that individual person. Most people don't get over this in a weekend. All right. Most people it's months to get through this. And that's not to be scary or it's not like it's terrible and, and at its worst for months. It, it, it'll go like a roller coaster or like ebb and flow. So just take the time you need because there's so many things involved here that healing from toxic abuse and narcissism is a whole process. Okay. So just be patient and appreciate the things that are better for you. So there's a whole list of other ways to heal from trauma bonds and narcissism and all of that. And we can talk about that in another time, but there's just start for getting through these first days, or if you're trapped in the cycle of the discard and Hoover, you know, this is, these are some tips for getting you from the feelings of trauma bonding to starting to take control of your own life and not having that other person control you from a distance because you're trauma bonded. Hit subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Take care.